coming out of it right now. And Jermaine Mack and all those guys. Keep they've going got some great and going. athletes. <laughs> 10.33 left in the second. Paladino drills this one to the heart of the end zone. So the Lancers, after all that, just three, but they're on the board. Paladino being recruited by many schools, having only started kicking football for two years. Very religious guy. Uh, wants to probably major in religious studies or be a policeman later on in his career. <laughs> Battle, tripped up, good play defensively. Back there for the Lancers. I just got a number, what was that, 22? Number 22. It was indeed Sam Gross, the big performer that you kind of dissed earlier, but <laughs> you call him like you see him. Well, speaking of guys that's being heavily recruited, Sam Gross is being heavily recruited. They think he's a Division I linebacker. Certainly a, a fine player at both ends of the football. Now the Lancers are starting to flex their muscles a tad bit. It is third down and about 10 coming up. Third and 10, we'll call it. That last run, was that Gaither? I think Gaither ran it? Yes. For Gaither, only his fourth carry. Picked up two, he has 19 yards. Pass by Battle, nearly intercepted for the Lancers by Bobby Thompson. Boy, wouldn't a Thompson like to hit a home run right there? Well, Willie, you're showing your age. Bobby Thompson, 1951, New York, uh, uh, New York Giants, and in the Polo Grounds, I was, uh, Reading that in my history class, I didn't know really what was going on. You were in high school, you ha. remember it, you were there. Was that 1951 or 1971? <laughs> I don't know, I wasn't was there 50. either way. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 51, I wasn't even a gleam in my parents' eyes. The 50s, ouch. That was before the Beatles, I don't know it. That snap, brutal, two bouncer, fielded nicely, however, by Lahara. And then it'll take a Bruin bounce to the 43. Even when they don't play it well, the Bruins are playing it well. Things are going right for the Bruins. Both times that the Lancers were near the six point pay dirt, something went wrong, but at least the last time they got three points out of it. Well, you'd rather be lucky than good, but when you're lucky and good, <laughs> things are just going too well. First down and 10 for the Lancers. That play going absolutely nowhere. Valdez looked like he was struggling just to get a good grip on the football while one of the Bruins was struggling to get a good grip on him. Lost the Bruins are committed to being very aggressive defensively. And they, that has really paid big dividends. They're vulnerable to trap plays and draw plays and all those type of plays with aggressive defense but the Lancers have not been able to take care, uh, take care of the football and take advantage of the aggressiveness of the Bruins. 81 yards of offense for the Lancers, 122 for the Bruins. They haven't really outdone them statistically, but when you get a fumble on the 10 and another football loose, that would be the third turnover. But the Lancers got it back. Their fourth fumble, the second that they've recovered. It's just... They're manhandling the big, strong, vaunted offensive line of the Lancers that we've heard so much about all season. Well, the original strategy was to go with that power running game because of the big horses up front. But that ought to give you an indication of how things were going for the Lancers because they changed their game plan. They're going to more deception than power. And... It, I think it's coming back to haunt them a little bit. The power game didn't work when they went for it. Power game's not working now.
that's got to be intentional grounding, and it is. It doesn't matter if the coach is open. You got to have a receiver in that area. Very good point. The Lancers are very, very frustrated at this point. Nothing's really working. Actually, they've moved the ball quite well, but the penetration for the Bruins is just have it's really taking its toll. Now this is a huge penalty against the Lancers because it's a loss of down penalty. They're going to mark it off. It is not going to be just fourth and 14 because they mark it off from the point of the infraction. He threw it at the, I don't know, 15 yard line. It is a loss of down penalty from the point of the infraction. That penalty is a 32 yard penalty. First penalty against the Lancers and it's a Lulu. A 32-yard markoff, wow. It is fourth and 43. Fourth and 43, we'll just say fourth and half the football field. The Bruins will probably receive this kick about where the drive began for the Lancers. They'll probably receive it at the original line of scrimmage. There is a timeout on the field now. Timeout with 7.34 left in the second quarter, 21-3 in favor of the Bruins. And down on the field, Zaida Davis is running, running around trying to get an interview, so we'll throw it to a break instead. Two yard penalty to send it to fourth and 43, and then punting from the 10, that is a kick of 60 yards. A 60-yard punt for Dustin Palladino. We've seen him boot one off the hold on a field goal, but a punt, 60 yards? I point black asked Tom Bush whether Palladino was his most valuable player. He says, no, he's not, but he's close to it. Anytime you kick field goals, you kick the ball in the end zone on kickoffs, and you punt like that, you're pretty valuable. The key to that was the fact that the player back to receive, I think it was Velasquez, called for the fair catch, then let it go, thinking it would just bounce dead right about there. But instead, it took a huge topspin bounce in the favor of the Lancers. It took an additional 30-yard bounce. We have a player shaking up on the field. It was the player running the football. While we check out on the condition of the player shaking up, let's get a word from Zaida Davis, who's standing by with one of the rah -rahs. We're here with Carrie Tavazon, a cheerleader from Lakewood High School. What did you guys do to prepare for this game tonight? Well, we spent like 10 hours practicing for this entire week. We've, we've um, hired two stunt coaches and a choreographer, and we just really pumped up, and we're just so excited for this game. We're just so excited. We're going to win. Go Lakewood! Woo! And when the score is this behind, how do you guys keep the team pumped up as well as the crowd? Well, we've seen our team come out of bigger things than this, so we know that we can do it. Back to William Arrow in the booth. Blind allegiance is blissful. And when you're 16 and a cheerleader, you have to have that type of optimism. We're However. Only, you're down by 18. <laughs> so what? You know, spirit is great and everything, but if you had a game plan, that might help, you know. A couple plays would be good. Right now, the Lancers have been stymied in virtually all their facets of their game. They're, Lino Valdez has been pressured throughout, has had absolutely no room to to make any moves and more importantly, no time to make any decisions. That's right, and and as opposed to what the Milligan Rams didn't do last week, the Bruins are really being aggressive and going after Valdez each and every time he gets the ball from center. He is not allowed to really get a chance to go down that line and pitch and read the defensive end and secondary. He just wants to stay alive. If it was not the runner on the play who was, I, I believe, Gaither, it was instead one of the big offensive linemen, Anthony Casey, who was down on the field. It was a real late hit on Anthony Casey. I'm surprised it wasn't a flag, but that late hit resulted into an injury. Looked like either ankle or knee. Meanwhile, Zaida Davis having a field day with another word. We're with Matt Ruiz from Lakewood High School, athletic director and basketball coach. What did you do to prepare, prepare for this week's night tonight? 
Oh, well, I had a, uh, quite a lot of things to do. We had the uh, the best homecoming we've ever had, I think, with our with our festival. And I did some uh, things with my basketball team. Uh, we set up a booth and sold things, and um, uh, it's quite busy, actually. And how did, do you think this brings the morale of Lakewood High School together? Uh, I, I think it's done more than anything. I, I've been here four years, and this is the best homecoming we've had. I think it's probably done more for morale than anything that's ever been done here. Back to William Arrow in the booth. Indeed, we are here, and a nice run by Issa. Pickup of six, got near a first down. It'll set up a third and two. There is six minutes and 30 seconds left in this first half. 47 yards rushing on just four carries for Issa. Big play for the Bruins and the Lancers. The Lancers would really like to be able to stop the Bruins here, but nothing doing. Issa has a first down and more, but there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Usually it's against the offense when the play continues. Encroachment's usually whistled dead immediately. It is two men in motion simultaneously. That play's coming back. Five yarder, but more importantly, it kills a first down. Fourth penalty, 17 and a half yards in penalty yardage on four penalties for the Bruins. One penalty against the Lancers, 32 yards on that one call. Got the 10 yards on the, or 15 yards on the markoff and the 17 that the quarterback was back when he tossed it. A point of infraction penalty. Both coaches were saying that they were really suffering from horrendous penalties, a number of them, Willie, in the early season. And when they started turning it around, predictably, they cut down on the mistakes. Tonight, both teams are making some, but the Lancers are really in trouble. Battle's got a man. It is Lahera and Lahera with a first down. Well, that five-yard penalty didn't seem to dim the lights on the Bruins too much. That was a pickup of 13, first down. The Bruins offensive line is doing the job for battle. See, you don't see any penetration. He has a chance to take a two or three step drop and find an open receiver in the middle of the defense for the Lancers. Battle now, three of four passing for 59 yards. How you like that? We knew the Bruins could light it up, but we had not heard nice things about the defense, and the defense has been outstanding tonight. That's a great point, Willie, because the defense for the Bruins had given up over 500 yards against Edison, even though the Bruins dominated the game from an offensive standpoint. Five-yard mark off against the Lancers. But then again, you've got to consider the competition. Remember, before Wilson defeated Compton, by 50 something points. Compton defeated Duarte, I think it was, 60 to eight. So it's all relative. First down yardage on the first and five carry by Issa. He picks up nine. I'm so impressed with the way the Bruins are playing, both offensively and defensively. They are protecting their quarterback. They're throwing some really blocks for their running backs, and plus they're getting great penetration from the defensive line. Battle to pass. He's four out of five now, and he's got Velasquez. Velasquez, oh, a nice play for the Lancers. Coming up was Mitchell Mollett. That was a nice play. Yet, it was still a pickup of 13. The Bruins are running the ball well, and they're passing the ball well. They're just about doing everything they want to do in this football game, and they were a very confident group when, when I talked to them yesterday. You can talk the talk, but you got to be able to walk the walk. Gaither rams and headbutts into Bobby Thompson. Thompson manages that solo tackle, always a difficult deal. Another first down gain, a pickup 
of 11. 170 yards last week for Gaither against Compton, and he received his 10th touchdown run today. Six carries for 32 yards for Gaither, but Issa, five carries for 56 yards, and it was Issa again getting to the six. Give him nine on that carry. He now has 65 yards rushing on just six carries. You got to give credit to the offensive line for the Bruins. That's John Drake, Anthony Casey, Luke Brockman, Rosie Liu, and George Burnell doing an outstanding job. It is the double move to the inside. Instead, it's in the hands of Velasquez. He goes in. Seven yard pickup, touchdown. We'll take a break. Back with more in a moment. Too long. And the next same, generation. <laughs> next generation. We're training him right now. Matthew Padilla, my six year old son, has joined us in the booth. He's wanted to come up and watch us do a game all season long. He's finally here. Four minutes left on the nose in this first half. A half dominated by the Bruins. There has been no shortage of heroes. The amount of yardage is staggering now by the Bruins. 72, 72 yards passing for battle. Rushing yards, 65 for Issa, 32 for Gaither, 23 for Velasquez, just two carries, one of them a touchdown. You total those numbers, you're in the 200-yard range in just the first half against a team with allegedly an outstanding defense, and that's not to poke fun at the Lancers. They just haven't shown it. A flag I'm hyper, I'm sorry. down. Not a good thing it is encroachment against the Bruins. Well, the Lancers are hoping that this kind of thing starts to snowball. Or before the end of the half to keep the morale up. To keep a glimmer of hope, Chung Peoples, he's got a little bit of room. You know, against some of the other teams, that might have been a run that went the distance, but the Bruins have the kind of closing speed to pinch off that corner run. And at the tail end of that play, the Bruins weren't helping slow Peoples down. <laughs> I think that's an excellent point you're making, Willie. Even when the... Lancers break open for a long run. The Bruins recover defensively quite well. And Sean Peoples is no slow bunny or Lancer, no yeah. pun intended, but he was pursued with hot aggression on the part of the, the Bruins. Indeed. As we look at the replay here, he goes down the sidelines, and the, the, the flag comes as he's clearly out of bounds, and there's still a, a man handling him. That's really undisciplined play on the part of the Bruins. If you were trying to grab him and slow him down and help him out, it's one thing. But when you're unfriendly and try to do him some harm, it's quite the other thing. There is a break. Three minutes and 51 seconds left in the first half. We'll take a break back with more. Bruins leading it by 24. I thought that, that uh, your son was going to say, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to high school football. I'm afraid he would. <laughs> you know, you see, you watch Fox broadcasting you see Joe Buck the son of uh, the great Cardinal broadcaster Jack Buck you see Chip Carey the chip off the old Skip Carey and uh, the grandson of Harry Carey there is uh, something to be said for that gene pool people's no room to run on that play brought down immediately on a fine play by Kenny Maddox Kenny Maddox makes a fine open field tackle and that's what I'm talking about Willie when the Lancers break into daylight there's always a Bruin with their speed, like Kenny Maddox, coming in and making a fine open field tackle. Second down and nine. Second and nine, second and ten. All depends on your vantage point. Less than three minutes and 20 seconds left. Oh, that's Omer. Omer has not really gotten an opportunity to do much with the Lancer offense in disarray. It has been, in fact, the two pitches in his direction that were turned into turnovers by the Bruins. That, for Omer, would only be 
his second carry, something like that. Yeah, that's about right. He hasn't carried the ball very much tonight. That time, the Lancers went on the outside and, and got away from the internal penetration on the Bruins, and it was a good block by the pulling guard, which sprung that play. That guard being number 66 for the for the Lancers, Jose Tercios. For Omer, just his second carry of the game. He now has 11 yards rushing. I think you know, the Bruins had an excellent game plan, Willie, this first half. We will see what type of adjustment the Bruins, the Lancers will make in the second half to offset this very aggressive defensive line on the part of the Wilson Bruins. And that's usually the greatest mark of a coach is not how they prepare their team all week, but how they can adjust to what has happened on the field. Fine play to Peoples. It's a foot race that Peoples could win. Peoples to the 10, to the corner, touchdown. 35 yards, you said they needed to score before the half, and they did. Yeah, they really did, and, and that is going to be a pick-me-up for the Lancers tonight. Sean Peoples, great ball fake, Willie, in the backfield, as we'll probably see the replay of this as we look at it. Great ball fake right there, nice ball fake, and an inside run, and Make nice it. blocking All by, by the by the offensive line. Now it's a foot race, Willie, and Sean Peoples wins this foot race. He pays the cost at the end in the end zone, but he'll gladly take it. That is 69 yards rushing now for Peoples. The Lancers will go for two, and good decision for the Lancers because of that field goal, just the way they, down the road it, it could go. It would put them down by 16, two touchdowns and two two-point conversions should it work. Well, the, the key to that also is the offensive line really beating the defensive line for the Bruins to the punch that time. And they got off the ball really well. Nice ball fake by the quarterback and an inside run just like you planned it on Saturday afternoon in the film room. And what was impressive about that was the entire offense went left and it was Peoples on what you might call like a naked bootleg of sorts. Peoples on his own. And it was a foot race that Peoples will win quite often. But you can't do that without good blocking, Willie. You must have good blocking at the line of scrimmage. The Lancers have not been getting that. I think the, the Lancers have been out quick thus far here in the first half. But that is also the kind of play that you can take advantage of when you've got an overzealous defense that is committing and almost over committing at the attack. That's the vulnerability. Point after, two point conversion. And the two point conversion a flag is down. This could very much work against the Lancers. And the Lancers, should they be moved back five yards, might very well try to go for one. There is a player shaken up, left side lineman. Well, there's a Lancer mascot there, and as we look at the injured player, we don't have that number yet, but the Lancer mascot, after sitting down and being a little disgusted, has gotten up and started shaking his steel around, saying that, hey, we may still be in this ball game yet with 244, 27 to nine. You can always go back to the game that we did last year. Then again, these are two far different teams, but Pauly against Muir. Muir had a 19 to six lead with three minutes left before halftime. And by halftime, Polly had the lead. Yeah, and Polly, of course, can score in a hurry when you have that big time offense. As we look at the Bruin mascot now, great cam work by our students here. And this is homecoming night here in Lakewood. And uh, the Bruins are dominating. They're really spoiling the party right now. They've been able to do pretty much what they've wanted to do, Willie, except for this last play of how many yards did that go? 35. 35 yard play for the Lancers which kind of tightens it up. They're down now by 18 points. Still a lot of points, but we still have another half to play. In fact, that one play is a larger play than 
the Lancers had in passing offense, then Valdez had rushing the ball, then Perry, who has 34 yards, has rushing the ball on four carries, then Omer has on his two carries. That one play has had more yardage than any total by any senior lineman. Six foot three, 255 pounds. He wasn't easy to get off that field. The flag that was marked off would have been against the Bruins as Peoples runs further wide than he does deep, but he does get that one yard and get in for the two points. One of the Bruins shaken up, that's Curly Dorn, but that is a big, big play. Eight points on the board with less than three minutes left. Now the Lancers have to feel that, hey, they're a part of this ball game. Well, we'll take a break and talk about that in a moment. <laughs> yes. This wasn't Willie Padilla with his younger son. <laughs> it is only the end of the first half. They're playing it like they've got two minutes and 44 seconds till the ball game's over. Well, the future is now for the Lancers, I guess, in, from their point of view, if they can get the ball back with 244 and score at least a field goal, they will be down only 13 points instead of 16. So they're trying to get the ball back right away. Don't you think that's just a little extreme, though? <laughs> the future is now is one thing, but right now, I don't know. Well, it looks good if they can execute it successfully. They didn't do it that time, so they're they're now about 10 yards back. Well, if they can do it as a surprise, I mean, everybody knew that was coming on side. Even I did. I mean, I've seen a lot of football, and it doesn't happen in the first. I don't think I've ever seen an onside kick in the first half in my life. I have now, and a timeout is on the field. <laughs> 